funny thing is I didn't use a dating app. It's just that we were friends on Instagram, or I guess friends, and I'm putting on my air quotes, on Instagram, and I seen a picture of her one day, and I was just like, I have to say something to her, and I liked a bunch of her pictures. She liked some of mine, and I slid in the inbox, and here we are, uh, two kids later, uh, a, a, a house, new house, a new car, <laughs> almost five years later, so uh, we have done a lot in this time that we've been together, but I understand that a lot of people connect through certain dating apps, but I met my wife on Instagram, but just doing some research from eHarmony, um, they wrote a blog about uh, dating online and digital dating. Let's jump into this because, you know, I'm a statistics guy. It says 40% of Americans use online dating. And I believe that number is growing tremendously. And I'm going to jump into that a, a little further about, um, well, I'll jump into that later. They say statistically, men make up 52.4% of online dating users compared to 47.6% who are women. For women, online dating statistics show that a woman's desirability peaks at 21. But at 26, women have more online pursuers than men, whereas at 48, men have twice as many online pursuers as women. So, again, we get into this whole thing with a, a woman's beauty and her youth, and they talk about how online a woman peaks at 21, but at 26, women have more online pursuers than men. So you're talking about this five-year age gap where a woman really gets to maximize uh, her dating options for um, her vetting process and who she desired to be with but for men and we talked about this before about the the sexual market value right and I'm, I'm sure you are familiar with that term but women usually peak younger men they have a tendency to peak older so while women and a lot of times this happened during say high school years where a, a woman is you know she's say 18 to 21 she's around that age range where she just get to choose who she want because she's young she's enjoying her youth but as men as they get older 35 to 45, they start to make more money financially. Uh, they start to be a little more secure in themselves and who they are. And they have more options when they are older. So that's the whole dynamic with men and women with sexual market value. So this even proves true. And even in an online world, when it comes to dating, it says at 48, men have twice as many online pursuers as women. So here it is when men when they're older i mean they they have all the options and they, and that's at 48 and i remember i sent a tweet out not too long ago i said most men shouldn't marry until they're at least 35 or older are you tired of dating the same person just different faces are you tired of people wasting your time in this whole dating process do you desire to marry one day I created this five-part video series entitled Dating Intentionally, Five Ways to Know They Are the One for You. You can get it now in the comments section below. You will see it is five, the number five, ways to know podia.com. I created this five-part video series with you in mind. Now let's get back into today's podcast episode. Uh, when you're a younger man, I just have a tendency to think that you know, and I'm speaking from a male's perspective, right? That we really don't know what we want. We chasing women, things of that nature. Uh, I tell men to stay on this, this, this narrow road of chasing purpose and not panties, right? That as a man, we should be able, we should be chasing our purpose and not women because a lot of guys, they go broke trying to impress a woman that they might not even be with, you know, a year from now, right? So I think it's important that as a man, we need to stay focused um, in who we are and developing ourselves and our skill set. So that way we add that much more value when we're older, because you see even statistically, 
from online that men at 48 years old have twice as many online pursuers as women. But I know I kind of got off track, but I just want to add that in there. 53% of people lie on their online dating profile. 53%. And this is all this is coming from eHarmony blog. I thought this was interesting. 20% of women surveyed by global research agency on opinion matters admitted to using an older photo from when they were younger and thinner. That, that's 20% of women. More than 40% of men said they lied about their jobs in an effort to sound more successful. So here it is. As a man, you're online and 40% of men lie about this, lie about their jobs and how much money they make. So when you hear, and I, and I recently did a video on uh, finances and, and people talking about making six figures and all this thing. I, you know, I believe Kevin Samuels, rest in peace, was talking a lot about this six figure income earner. So it's become a, this whole buzzword. But more than 40% of men lied about their jobs. So you have to be careful in this whole betting process because I used to get on Clubhouse. I don't get on Clubhouse that much anymore, but the majority of men when, I, when I'm on Clubhouse, they're like, yeah, because I make six figures. Yeah, because I make six figures. And I'm like, there's a small percentage of people who make six figures. And for most guys to jump on Clubhouse and to say that, I'm like, you capping. You really capping. But anyway. Let's stay focused on the topic at hand. So be careful when it comes to this whole dating process and the vetting process, because you have to ask the right questions. And I created a, a online video series about asking the right questions when it comes to dating, because we ask the wrong questions. And then we wonder, this person switched up on me. They didn't switch up on you. It's just that you asked the wrong questions. But I'll have that um, in the comment section below as far as getting that online series. 22% of online daters ask friends to help create their profile. Female users are seeking help from friends more, more than men are. 30% of female users have asked a friend to help with their profile. Only 16% of males, male users have asked friends to help create their profile. So a poster, and I've met some awesome um, dating coaches and there's some people online that I follow and I listen to, just be willing to invest the money to get your profile right, opposed to going to friends. Because I know it's like, hey, girl, uh, hey, girl, I need some help with my profile. Does this look cute? Does this look cute? And she, girl, you fine, you cute and all that stuff. Man, man, you know, as men, and this says only 16% of males, because as men, we got a lot of ego, we got a lot of pride, a lot of bravado. So we really don't go on ask for help a lot of times and then even when we are asking our friends for help you know they're like yeah that's cool yeah you got this yeah you know just be willing to pay a dating coach because that's what they do and make sure that you invest um into into dating and i always talk about this with single people when you're on a date with someone ask them how much are you you don't say you don't have to say this per se but fix it up how you want to Ask them about how much are you investing in your relationship as far as growing as a person? Uh, how much you are you investing as far as therapy? How much you are investing in uh, coaching, books, conferences, all these different things because your money, wherever your money is, that shows me what you value. So if you invest in those things, you're very serious about a relationship. Female users aren't just looking for hookups. Only 33% of women who use online dating websites say they, they have sex on the first online dating encounter. So that's 33%. So guys, if you are here trying to get it, you got 33% of women out here that's giving it up on a first date. And 60% of female Tinder users say they are looking for a match, not just the hookup. So you do have to be a little more thoughtful and a little more cautious about the whole dating process, because sometimes guys come across as too aggressive. Right. And I was doing some research on that. And a lot of times people are sending unsolicited pictures or sexual pictures of themselves. And it's like, I didn't ask for all that. 
I was just trying to have a decent conversation with you. So sometimes men can be aggressive and we have to scale that back and be more respectful of our women. Um, And everyone isn't looking for hookups. Someone is actually looking for a long-term relationship or marriage. 20% of current committed relationships began online. I met my wife online. While your best chance of finding love is through a friend, I find that interesting, which is how 63% of married couples say they met their partner. You still only have a 17% chance that you will like the person you're set up with. Only 9% of women report finding a relationship at a bar or club, and only 2% of men has made a relationship through that scenario. And I was just like, wow, so a 63% chance that married couples say they have met their partner, and that's through a friend. So I have heard stories of people who have connected with other people through friends. They like, I know somebody. So who's in your circle? I think that's a good question to ask too. Who is in your circle? Who are you running with? And do they have quality friends? Because that way, if they have quality friends, you can hook them up with somebody you know, and who knows what can happen from there. 48% of online relationships end through email. I know we're in the age of ghosting, and sometimes people, they just, you never hear from them. You go out on a date or two, or maybe you've had a couple of conversations with someone, and they just ghost you. Let me explain why. If you met someone online, chances you will break up online. I thought that was interesting. While some might see this as rude, those who are socially awkward or fearful uh, confrontation will find it convenient. At least there won't be a painful breakup. So they, they talk about how if you meet someone online, chances are you will break up online. So people who deal with a lot of uh, social anxiety or, or social awkwardness, it's just easier for them. Uh, and even with, like, I grew up old school, right? I grew up old school where some of you might not even know what I'm talking about, but I'll just say this. We used to go to the mall and I'm telling my age with a pen and a piece of paper, and we will see who we can talk to. if We met in the mall and sometimes you get rejected. Sometimes, you know, you might be able to get her number. It just depends. Sometimes she'll give you a fake number. Uh, sometimes if she was interested in you, she would give you her real number. So we had to deal with in my era and in my age, we had to deal with rejection and be OK with some girl saying, nah, I'm OK. I don't want to talk to you or whatever. You know, and sometimes it could be really bad, but we got through that. But with social media, you either get ghosted or either uh, you just don't they just don't respond to you or. Uh, they just break up with you through a text message. And I only can imagine, this never happened to me before, but I only can imagine how that has to play on you psychologically for someone to break up with you through an email. So I think that's uh, the pros and cons with that is if you meet somebody online, chances are they might break up with you online. But this is just from what I'm reading from the blog. Last but not least, Common interests and looks are the most important factors. When it comes down to it, 64% of people who use online dating sites are looking for someone that they have something in common with. And 49% say they are looking for someone with physical characteristics who they are attracted to. So 64% of people are looking for someone that have common interests. Uh, You know, my wife and I, we read books together. So that was a common interest that we had. That was something that kept us jailed together during the time that we were dating long distance because we would get on Skype and I guess, you know, telling my age again, we would get on Skype and we would read books together. Uh, that was something that we had in common. We, we like having those deep conversations, those deep stimulating conversations that would lead to us understanding each other even more because of the books that we read. So Whatever your common interests are, if you like, if you like to go hiking, all these different things, bike riding, um, maybe you like going to the library. I mean, people still like going to the library, just different things. I think that is very important, those common interests, because that helps you draw closer together. 
as well as understanding their favorite hobbies. You might not care about their hobbies, but if you take an interest in their hobby, you might mess around and learn something and they will even like you even more because you've taken a chance to step outside of your world and to um, to like something that they actually like. They would appreciate you even more. So, of course, our looks important. Very important. When I seen my wife online, I was like, yeah, I need to talk to her because she's fine. Yeah, I posted a picture on Twitter uh, with a picture that I saw and it was, you know, it was it was done in, in class and stuff like that. But I was like, I need to talk to her after I seen that picture because all her pictures were classy and she posted some pictures of her son and stuff like that. There wasn't any pictures of her booty hanging over the seat. Uh, shout out to y'all as well. I'm not hating. I'm just saying. But all her pictures were classy. And I was like, OK, that kind of gave me the green light to talk to her because she really wasn't trying to get attention from everybody. She was classy. She dressed a certain way. And I appreciated that. So looks are important. I know this was a lot of information. But this was from eHarmony, and I'm sure a lot of you know about eHarmony and the dating website, but I just wanted to help some people with the ups and downs of digital dating. Make sure you share this video with a friend on YouTube. Make sure you share this in your, in your group chat with someone. Uh, also, leave a rating and review if you are listening to this via uh, podcast. On Apple Podcasts, leave a rating and review. If you do, we will leave your name in a drawing for a free Amazon gift card. This is Sean Heineman at Scary to Remarry, your premier pre-engagement coach. Take care, people.